Here we have another thing that we can do from this data that was collected. Calculate the values for E sub A and A for this reaction. They've given us T and K. And we know that the formula that we use is actually treating one over T. So I've added another column that is the value of one over T. So that now I have values for K that go with values of one over T. And I can use numbers for these variables and those variables and E sub A will be the missing thing that I can find. And I'm going to choose two of them, but I encourage you to try this problem yourself by picking two different ones than the ones that I picked. Let's try working that out. So we will put them in. I want K1 over K2, so I'm going to put the 5.9 times 10 to the negative 13 over the 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 13. That's nice, the negative 13, this part's all gonna cancel and I'll be able to calculate that easier. And that will be E sub A over R. And then I can put in one over T2, 0 0.00388 minus 0 0.00420. I haven't put anything in yet for R. Which R am I using? Because we know R is this gas constant, but there's more than one that we might use. We are going to want to use the one that has joules in it this time because this is an energy. If I calculate the 5.9 over the 7.7, because those canceled, taking the natural log of 0.7662.34, I'm adding all sorts of extra sig figs right now because it'll, they'll disappear eventually. Here's E sub A, which I'm looking for. And R should be the 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. That being a logarithm, this should be a pure number. A negative 3.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. And this is inverse Kelvin. This is under two division signs. This would only be under one. So in this case, now we can see that the Kelvins will cancel out. When I do this logarithm, I find out it's a negative number, which is fine by me because I have a negative number over here to deal with. I'm trying to get a e a by itself. So I'll use this to multiply joules just per mole now and cancel the Kelvin right now. And then I will be dividing by this one. Well, I'm gonna get rid of that negative sign. The negative signs are gonna cancel. Run this through my calculator. And I end up with 69.19 joules per mole. We probably can't keep all of these. In fact, I would say based on this, I should only keep two sig figs. So I should do two things here. I should round this back to two sig figs. And I should also use the usual way of expressing E sub A. We usually express it in kilojoules per mole. That has a factor of a thousand. So 6.9 kilojoules per mole. That's the EA part. Now we still have to figure out what A is. So I'm going to have to use the other formula, our Arrhenius formula, K equals A E to the minus EA over RT. I know EA now. I will be able to use that. This is not the only way that I could do this. I could do it from logarithm of K equals minus EA over RT plus the logarithm of a. So I could say that logarithm of k minus logarithm of a is negative ea over rt. Let's get rid of this by switching the order here. Natural log of a minus natural log of k would be equal to ea over r times 1 over t. Now I can pick just one of the ones and I'm going to go ahead and choose this one because it was one of the two that I used when I was calculating E sub A. So I'll go ahead and use this value and put it in place of the one over T. And set this up as natural log of A over K. E to this equals E to the E A over R one over T. And I can just put these numbers in. I'm using the first row. This will cancel that. A would be K times all of this. So you see it goes right back to 
rearranging this, only this now is going to be positive instead of negative. It's a manipulation you wouldn't necessarily have to do, but it just depends on which of these you've remembered when you're trying to do the problem. I can just go ahead and put these in now. The K I am going to pick up from up here, because I said I was going to use the first one. 5.9 times 10 to the negative 13. E raised to 6,900 and then the 8.314, and then the 1 over t, which was from the first one, so 0 0.00420. You're going to end up with, put an intermediate step here, this is e to the 3.486, you get 32.64. What are the units of a? So the units are all part of k. k is in units of cubic centimeters per molecule second. I'd much rather have something that had molarity in it. Well, molarity is moles per liter. I'm gonna write down the units that I have, cubic centimeters, over molecule and second. Do I have to use some factors to deal with this? One liter is the same as 1,000 cubic centimeters because a cubic centimeter is the same thing as a milliliter and liters are part of molarity. And I can also use Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in a mole. And now I can see moles per liter would be molarity. This is upside down. So this is going to be inverse moles. I can multiply these together. 1.16 times 10 to the 10th by the time you get through all of this. And that is now inverse molarity and inverse seconds. So we finally got to an answer. And we don't have really a good intuition about the meaning of that number because, I mean, it's the first time we've even seen one. But okay, we did manage to come up with something that is at least has time in it and it has molarity in it. So okay, we'll just accept it.